All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hard Money Bankers webcast. And today we have a very, very unique guest. Uh, he's got the Hollywood story, and I mean that quite literally. So today we have Kyle Klaus joining us. So Kyle, welcome. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And before we get into things, I'll, I'll just want to share the story of how Kyle and I met, because you know how I'm always harping. Networking is everything. Network, 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 right? So our last webcast that went out uh, was the Lovely Bones one, which, which many of you probably watched. And it was about the real estate property that was in that. So Kyle sends me back an email, uh, assuming that I know who he is because he worked on the project. So he thought I was actually contacting him about the project itself, the Lovely Bones project. Uh, it turns out I'm just in real estate and happened to be talking about the same project he worked on. So. It was just an email back saying, cool, I worked on that. I was like, oh, awesome. What did you do? So, Kyle, you want to, uh, you want to share with the world what, your, what, what you know, your claim to Hollywood is on, on Lovely Bones and other films here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, f first of all, I get, I get hit up a lot just like that. And I, I really thought it was just, you know, I've been on a lot of sets where I've gotten to know a lot of people and then they'll, they'll, they'll text me or email me and, you know, it'll be like this saying, like the saying of the, of the movie or whatever. And then it'll go into it. Like, Hey Kyle, you know, we met on lovely bones. I got into mortgages and now I just want to let you know. So we like continue our business, um, you know, together, but yeah. So on, on lovely bones, um, you know, I met a lot of people like, like this, uh, this was about 10 years ago that, that film, I, I believe, yeah. but, uh, I was Mark Wahlberg stand in for a, and, and double for about maybe two to three years on consecutive projects. Um, it just so happened that when I started out my career, he was um, doing a lot of films in Philadelphia. So I had met him on the set of Invincible and you know, it was just like Philadelphia would have one or two films a year. And you know, I, I was really into getting into the business at that time. So I, I started uh, working on, you know, a film when it would come come around in the summer or whatever. So Invincible came. Mark Wahlberg was the star of that, obviously. And then he, uh, you know, I got to know him like through the football round a couple times. You know, had a beer or two. It was it was like a pretty cool experience. And then um, from that, he, you know, he came the next time to do The Happening, and that was in Philadelphia the next summer. And then I had already gotten into real estate around there, and it, with the intention of, you know, I got into real estate with the intention of making money, but wanted to focus on this acting thing too. So then the happening came and I just so happened to be Mark's like basically height and weight and they need doubles and, and stand-ins to like set up every shot. So I ended up getting hired for that job. And then it just brought me to the lovely bones after the happening. Cause he came literally right back after a week. I believe Ryan Gosling was supposed to do the happen or the lovely bones. And then something happened with that and Mark got hired a week or two after the happening was done. So wow. he came back to Philadelphia and I just went right in and, and worked again. So that's where the lovely bones came in. <laughs> that's and, uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I mean, that, that's, uh, that'll catch our audience up to how this, this whole thing connected here. Um, yes. But the point being network, right? Uh, because Kyle and I had not previously talked, and it's just that's how networking works. I don't even know how I was on that email. <laughs> this was about a week ago. Yeah, week yeah, ago. literally a week ago. Yeah. So I always encourage it. You, you know, always, always ask. Just say, "Cool, what do you do?" You know, learn about a person. Just, just poke some feelers, and then you know, we got to emailing, and it's, you know, Kyle here runs runs his own company, successful real estate. So I said, "Hey, you know, that's those are the stories we love to have on our webcast. You want to do a webcast?" And here we are. So, yeah, so yeah, why don't you why don't you tell us uh, about uh, a little bit about yourself, what your company? Because uh, everyone who watches this, mostly realtors and investors, uh, people looking to get into real estate, but we also have many veterans. So, but tell us a little bit about what what you currently have operating, and then we will jump into how you got there. Okay, so currently I have operating. Um, I'm a broker. Uh, broker of record of prestige properties. We have an office located in Hoboken is our, our main headquarters, um, 210 Newark Street in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, I came in, me and my, my business partner now, um, we came into this 
you know, in 2012, we opened up, but that's currently what we have now. We have, you know, we're, we're currently opening up in other areas, Montclair. We have an office um, that's opening and we have, I'd say roughly like 18 or so agents at Hoboken. And then, you know, it's growing, um, you know, in the Montclair one uh, that's coming aboard. And, um, you know, I'm still actively uh, an agent. I like selling properties. So I'm, I'm still a, a, a big listing agent. Um, sure. And then I, you know, disperse my, you know, my leads and stuff like that and have, you know, people that are, that are doing that. So I'm, I'm very heavily in the, in the marketplace now as like an active agent as well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you talk about that. What, what's it like? Cause I, I myself have my license, but I mean, becoming a broker of record is like something that I would, to me, it seems daunting. It just seems like a lot. So how did you get yourself there? Uh, I mean, over the years, right? I mean, I, I guess, tell us about your story here. I mean, I know, I know you started with acting. So what the heck made you go into real estate and eventually become broker of record? Sure. sure. It actually was pretty of an organic process. Um, you know, I, I started out in Pennsylvania as a real estate agent. And I mean, I, I was focused getting out of college is really where, where it started and, and being like, okay, really, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Um, acting was my goal, passion, whatever you, you call it, you know, it's something that I wanted to do. And I felt like I'd have regrets if I never tried it. So I really wanted to go after that. Now, at the same time, I kind of had the wherewithal at the time to be like, you know, I don't want to be nothing wrong with this, but like a waiter, bartender, when I'm older, if it takes a long time to get there. So I looked at avenues of, you know, and I bartended for a long time, but like, I just didn't want to, I, I needed something that I would feel good about a career, but also allow me the flexibility. Just so happened to get into real estate at the time. And I was doing it in Philadelphia, um, or around the Philadelphia suburbs. And then I moved up here and kind of had to learn a new, it was just made sense to move in this area because the real estate was much better in the market. Um, the acting, of course, being right across the river from New York City was second plus place in the United States, if not, you know, between this and LA. Right. So I learned the new, I had to learn a new area and a new marketplace. Um, so that was daunting. And I just so happened to move at 2008, which was like the <laughs> worst time. But or best the time, thing was- you look at it. <laughs> What's that? Depending on how you look at it, because the way I got into the brokerage thing was in this area, rentals were high. And I mean, somebody has to live somewhere. So like just because the market was kind of not doing so well in the sales, you know, the sales market, rentals were great around here and you were making quick money. And that's kind of why what I needed to do. So I started the rental you know, getting into rentals around here and doing like working up to the way to get it, like doing honestly, I don't know how I even did it, but it was like eight to 15 rentals a month wow. at the time when I moved here, I worked up to that like kind of volume. And it was pretty much what my focus was, was that and acting. And I was, you know, wearing different hats. And then I kind of just knew what to do. And I felt like at this certain point that I could explain and I could teach people how to do the exact same thing I'm doing. So the way it went into brokerage was a very easy and, and, and felt like natural transition to me where I was like, okay, I had the experience. Um, my, my partner at the time where I, I was friends with him, his dad had a broker's license. I didn't have mine yet, but it was like very, I was in the business three years here and we just so happened to open the office and you know, quickly people came because I could teach them what to do easily and they were making money and everything was great. Like they could make money right away. And I guess the key was where, you know, I had this vision where I was looking at that was ultimately a better scenario than, you know, if I went out and had to do a deal, I had to be there at a certain time, right? I had to be there. And if I wasn't there, the deal wouldn't happen. Or if I did show and it didn't go through, I would lose all of the money, you know, like the, there was no deal. So if I was like, well, I, I really want to do this acting thing, I still had that in my mind. And I was like, well, if I can, you know, maybe make less because it's, you know, I'm either they're, they're taking out the, the client, but just being able to leverage myself more. Sure, and, yeah, it's a win-win to be able to, you know, say, hey, I, I will give you money to be at a physical location at a certain time and to handle this exactly. 
um, because you, you were basically saying, I still want to pursue my passion and, and real estate. There's really not many, I mean, there are other avenues, but I think real estate is possibly the best avenue to allow for that dual, I, like the multiple hat that, that you, you were I suggesting. Agree. Because so many people try to do this in the real estate world, right? They, they, they love the flexibility of real estate, um, but it's hard at the beginning, right? I mean, that mm -hmm. is probably the hardest part because uh, every, everyone who's in your shoes now, you know, you, you don't always see that first five, six, seven years that you no. went through to get to where you're at right now, right? Right. So that's, that's why, I mean, I, when we were talking, I was like, oh, your story is perfect because so many people are in your shoes. They're of the, you know, well, some people just love real estate 100% and they want to do that. That's great. Awesome. Uh, but many people also want to do it, whether it's acting or maybe it's, it, it could be even just, I want to spend more time with my family, right? It, it could be whatever anything. it is, anything. Yeah. yeah. And real yep. estate provides that flexibility. So I always called it, I always called it like the big why, like your, your big why. And mm -hmm. it's, and I've realized it has to be, it has to be selfish. Yeah. Um, you know, it does, it should be. but yeah. it doesn't mean it's, it seems like, like if it's to spend more time with your kids, that's a selfish reason, but it's, you know, that's it's your reason. It's your why it's your reason. Yeah. Got it. So Got it. I, I do agree with that. And I, I think that's what actually got me to really, you know, it's just getting you out of bed every day and getting, you know, like having a, a passion about something. And then you, you build real estate around it. I mean, I just so happen to like love real estate too, which is a great, you know, icing on the cake. But um, to piggyback off of what you said, I, I, I do want to say like the first couple of years, I, I remember running around like a chicken with my head cut off, basically, like just making it happen. Like I had to make it happen, you know? And what I always used to tell people, because at that time when we were doing rentals, it was simply, you know, get up. And it was, it's funny, like we used to, it, it was so easy. I, the game changed so much, but it was like going into these rental buildings that had like 300 units and they would give us the availability and pay the broker fee. So really all we had to do was like, take the pictures put the information online and at that time it was like postlets and it would feed out to like craigslist, craigslist and, Zillow yeah, and, all yeah. that. <laughs> and i would just tell people every day all your job is but you have to do this every day is get up nine o'clock i would sit with my coffee and i'd post 10 apartments online and from that point on that that is like the easiest thing that would take me an hour but some people wouldn't have that you know commitment to do it and now even since I'm out of the rental game, but I still have like agents that are doing it. Um, it's to hit my contacts every day. And it's only an hour, it's only an hour or two, but it's like today I just did it before this conversation. It was five new people to talk to, five follow-ups, five sphere of influence and five buyers. Like it's just constant and it's never taken a day off. I, I think it's gold what you just gave. I'm not sure everyone would have caught that. Um, it's, I, I so, <laughs> Our stories, while different, uh, are very similar um, in terms of timeline and things like that. And what you just said is so spot on to exactly what I went through, uh, my partner went through, and you know we, we would consider ourselves successful in this industry now. It's that it's that every day, whatever it is that you have to do for your business, um, ours was similar to yours. It was it's follow ups, it's the calls, you know hour or two a day. Uh, you know, I know the Craigslist, you know, it's become Facebook and Instagram, you know, it, there'll be something else in another couple yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. But it's the every day, you know, it's not the once a week, maybe on a Saturday type thing, because you just don't get the traction that your business needs. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the persistence. It really it's everyday persistence. Yeah. Uh, persistence and consistency is the key. Consistency. It's and the thing is that I think where a lot of people will run into, and I know I, I had to struggle with this a little bit, was say you do do that, and then you end up getting so busy mm -hmm. that they're like, oh, now I'm too busy. I can't do this. No, don't to look stop. For new business. Don't stop. Now it's like, I, I, but I can't. I got a showing. I got to go do a showing. It's like, no, you block the time off. Yeah. Like, you have to do that. Everything else is just comes, you know? But it, I, exactly. That's all it is. We, I mean, 
uh, my, my, my partners, we have a really healthy business relationship where we know where the other person's getting like swamped. Because so the thing, uh, what I, we like to talk about is delayed gratification. And that's a big thing in the real estate world. Uh, so that, those, that marketing that you were doing every day, you may not have seen anything, anything for like two to three months when you first started doing this. Then all of a sudden on month three to six, those phone calls start coming in. Right. Mm -hmm. And you maybe all of a sudden you had a really super busy day and you're like, what the heck just happened? And it wasn't something you did yesterday. It was something you did three months ago. It was the work you put in all the way back then. Three months ago. So, yeah. but during those busy times that you're talking about, when it all of a sudden does come in and it will be your next problem once you get there, it's a good problem to have. It means you're progressing. You don't stop those daily activities. You got to keep going because. Right. Uh, I've been there. I'm sure you've been there. The worst feeling is when the phone stops ringing after it was just ringing. It's oh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that, and that's what happens yeah. three months after if you're like, oh, it's too busy. I'm so busy because of the work you did three months ago. And then you stop. It's the three months later that you're going to be like, oh, where is everything? Where did everything go? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So and that, it is a lot of work. You know, it's I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's a lot. Uh, but my gosh, is it still worth it? Um, because then, then you figure out things that you've done, right? You re you realize like business is good. I'm making the money. I'm putting so much time in, but I'm losing. You're I'm assuming I'm making an assumption here, but you're probably having a hard time adding in the acting stuff at that when that was happening. So you found a way to say, okay, I'm making enough money. I can I can make a win win situation here with other people where they will also make money, and mm -hmm. I can also pursue my acting. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's you know what a, a, another key thing that happened to me. I think with that is is scheduling. I, I've stopped with to do lists. Like it's just I've, I I I think I was listening to a Tom Tim Ferriss thing, and it was like stopping to do because my to do list just got overwhelming. Sure. And then you would see something like that, like written down, and you just get overwhelmed. But I think the key for me was when I learned to like if it's like schedule it in because, and for me, it's like, if it's not in the schedule, it just doesn't exist. Yep. It's, you know, it, cause you can, so those two hours that I do prospecting every day, I'll also work in an hour of like acting business that I need to take care of, you know? And it's, it's literally like that. And those couple hours, which are like the power hours and then everything else is kind of just fills in, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I so. I, I think we're saying the same thing when I'm about to say this. I call it my priority list. So it's not really a to-do list. I have my top three things that have to get done for that day. Um, and then yeah. I, don't, I don't fill it in after that because you're right. Like too much changes, it, it might as well not even exist. So I, for me, also, I have a priority I'll take, list. I'll take the to-do list and put it into my seat. Like be like, okay, I'm going to do this at this time. So it's kind of like a, yeah. There you go. Same, you're you're prioritizing it in, in that way. Prioritize. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because it's time management and, you know, it is the next problem that you're, that you will eventually have. Because when you first start, you have the time, you know, that, that it's more of a discipline of making sure you're doing the work. That's, that's like step one, right? It's not necessarily a time management, but step two becomes a time management process. And, uh, you'll figure it out, you know, as long as you don't quit, right? As long as you keep going, you'll figure out what is priority for your business. What keeps the money coming in? So you don't bleed out. Um, but it, it is very important to not overwhelm yourself with what you're saying, because it, it, it will very quickly become overwhelming. And that mentally is more of a challenge. You're putting more of a challenge on yourself than you need to. So yeah. and I, I had that discussion with one of my agents just recently where he was, you know, been in the business like two full months, three full months, got a lot cooking, mm -hmm. but it's just, and I taught, it's like, it's kind of like a funnel, you know, and it's right now it's all out here. And it's just going to, you just got to trust the process that it'll all, you know, that'll come through. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's really like things that you're not even knowing, like in those three months that you were talking about of like generating business, but not seeing it come for, to for fruition. Yeah. It, it's like, you're also picking up how to like talk to people, how to close deals, yeah. you know, how to, so there's little, uh, you know, intangible things i think that you pick up along the way that you just ultimately get better with and you know learn how to let the 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 the, the way time wasters go and you know and those are stuff that it's really hard to teach you know 
Absolutely. It's, I mean, experience is the best teacher, right? So exactly. yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. So I guess, I guess the moral of this story is the first year is the hardest, but it gets better. I promise. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It does. It does. So you just, you know, I, I guess the, the brokerage thing kind of just is a, is a, or it was an organic process that kind of just opened up and it was just kind of, um, you know, circling back to the whole thing. It yep. was just kind of like having that, um, being able to leverage yourself, you know, Absolutely. but you first have to know how to do it yourself so much, you know, that, that you can leverage yourself. I yeah. Think. It'd probably be aggressive if your goal going in was, I want to be a broker before you Ex learn. Anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how long have you been uh, the broker there? Uh, so been, I've been the broker while well, we opened in 2012, literally five months before Sandy hit. Oh. And um, oh. I don't know, you, you know, in Hoboken. not a lot of people are know what Hoboken went through, I guess, like during Sandy, we, you know, it's kind of funny, we <laughs> actually, when I moved up to this area, there was two places I interviewed at, I interviewed at a huge, uh, huge brokerage that pretty much had it, you know, had the, 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 the grasp on like everything in, in the area. Then I also interviewed at this like small mom and pop shop, but like the the people that worked there were super cool. The, the broker was super cool. And I ended up going to that one because it was, you know, I won't name names or anything, but like they're not in business anymore, but they were, I, I just felt more flexibility. I actually vibed with like a lot of the agents and sure. I, um, you know, the, the big one, I just felt like sometimes, and this is a good thing for some people to, to think about is like, sometimes like just because it's a big agency, it's not, going to have that intimate feel you're not going to strive there as as good possibly you know you're, you're not going to because of how big they are so i ended up going to the smaller one that was like you're going to make money right away and you know it's it was just what i ended up going with and was it a little um, more hands-on at, at the more hands -on. okay yeah okay and more of a, a culture you know and actually two of the guys were that that i started working with this was 2008 they ended up being in my wedding. I was in their oh, wedding. Wow. Like That's we awesome. really got close. We shared a shore house together. Like it was really cool. Um, the, so at, at the time, so then 2008 to 2011 was just, you know, working there. And then 2011 rolls around where we open up this office. I meet my, my, my buddy who actually I met, he, um, he owned a uh, gym in Hoboken and I had to learn how to, box because I was I was going to work on Wahlberg's fighter movie and um I went in saying hey I need to you know do this I'm I'm, I'm working with this guy and he had another guy that was doing stunts in his in his uh in his gym so I he just got me introduced to him and I learned how to box and fast forward we're business partners in the real estate uh, get out <laughs> so that's a funny little story there but um you know when we we open, it was on the same exact block as the mom and pop shop that I was working on. So I literally left the office and on the same block, but the opposite side, there was this commercial space available and I opened up there. It was cheap rent. And that's another thing that was big for, for, for me, where I was like, I need to keep the expenses low. Like mm -hmm. I want to get overhead is a lot of people fall into that trap where they want, you know, big stuff right off the bat. It's like, keep the expenses low profit first yeah. is the most important and then grow from there. Overhead and, is the death uh, of any business. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. But we opened up and about th three or four months later, um, Sandy hit and we were five feet underwater. So our office, and nice. it was just like, I mean, luckily like Starbucks, you can work out of there pretty much. <laughs> do, you know, do it. I signed my first deal and our first check to prestige at Starbucks. So that was, uh, <laughs> hey, at least, you, at least you did it. At least you were still able to do business during that time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. but it worked out. I so, mean, if you can survive so, that, you know, you, you, you're going to be fine, right? It's only going to be so. better. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing is like, you can, you have nobody to blame, but yourself. You just got to keep pressing on and, you know, you can't make excuses about anything in, in exactly. Business. I mean, people all, would have. When Sandy hit, I'm sure there were people that were like, it's not my fault. Sandy hit. True. Yeah. That is true. But if you give up because of that, you're out. 
And you have people like yourself who said, well, everyone's got sand to deal with here. I'm going to figure this out. I know there's no rule book. There's no guidebook that says how to survive Sandy, but I'm going to keep swimming and make this. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right uh, analogy there. For the Sandy no, plotting, yeah, no, but, you're, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, no, you're absolutely right, though. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And I didn't even know this till I reflectively like looked back on it. it. We had no other choice. Like there was no other choice but to persevere. I mean, yeah. right. You could have said, hey, Sandy hit. Oh, our business went up you know, like, woe is me, and it exactly. wasn't my fault, but, you know, that, it's just not the way my brain works, and, you know, you, but it wasn't like, I wasn't born with that, you just got to train yourself to, to think like that. You know? It is a mentality, for sure, 100%, you know, it's something that, even if you're not there today, you can train yourself to, to just be so disciplined, and, and, and push through anything, so, I mean, that's that your whole story from the beginning to end, right? I mean, we always say, you know, it's it's when you're in the do or die situation is when you're going to find out if you're going to succeed. If, if you are in a comfortable job right now uh, that, you know, pays the bills, it's probably actually going to be harder for you mentally push to the next level because you're not going to do that extra item on Saturday, that extra item on Sunday. You're going to say, yeah, yeah. It's, it's easier to push it push by it. You know, maybe there are some people who, who can do that. I know I myself could not. Uh, I, I left my comfortable nine to five job. I was making a comfortable six figures. As I said, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. And I know comfort can be a trap. Um, yeah. So I left it. I, I, I mean, I had no reason to other than, you know, fortunately, my, my partner here, my brother, uh, nice. he, he kind of proved this out. And, you know, he said, you know, it'd be a year or two of a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, and it yeah. was, I made less money, you know, I took the hits, um, but I knew if I stayed comfortable, I wouldn't have been able to do both. So it sounds like your story from the beginning of the, the acting, like you're not comfortable. You, you want to make money um, oh, yeah. and you want to do acting, you know, how do you do both? And you just put yourself, you basically put yourself in the fire the whole way through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, That's interesting. And, did you start, did you start at all? A dabble in it while you were in the nine to five i did i did exactly exactly i dabbled i dabbled but it, it just wasn't moving right it was like mm -hmm. if, if i don't if i don't commit and, and i mean yeah. really and, and so i have to i want to be careful with what i say here because i'm not encouraging anyone to leave their, their job uh but i will say no because i run into this all the time and i want to know yeah no this is good this nothing is good. happened for me I've until i did that i'm just gonna say that you what? Nothing happened for me until I left my job and said, you know, because basically what happened at my job is I was very comfortable. Um, it was a corporate job. I, I'm, a, I'm a techie. Um, so I wasn't even in the real estate world, you know, probably like yourself, like you knew acting. I don't, I don't know how much you knew of the real estate, but um, you know, you jumped in, right? Um, but I wasn't willing to make that jump until I left my, my corporate job. I just got, I just got, I needed the flexibility. You know what it was? I'll tell you what it was. It was, it was when my, my brother, said, I'm going golfing on Friday with my dad. You want to join? I said, I can't. I, I can't. I, I, yeah. I, I can't just leave work, right? I got to ask my boss and they're not, right. not going to let me. And that was it. I was, I was like, forget this. You know, I can't do this the rest of my life. Yeah. 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 If I want to go golfing on a Friday, I'm going to do it, damn it. Right. <laughs> so, um, so that was it. That's this is funny because I get asked that a lot. This is, uh, this is something that I've got asked a lot by agents all the time. How do you, I have my own take on this uh, about, about should I leave my job uh, and go into real estate? Okay. Um, I mean, that's my story. So I did it. I left and, and, and I have no regrets. It's been awesome since. So what do you, what do you tell people that do ask you that? No, that's, that's amazing. And it's, it's actually, I think you did it. The way you did it was, was perfect too. Because you dabbled in it, but nothing was moving, but you still saw the potential in, in what you were doing. Yeah. So I come yeah. across this a lot with, with agents and they ask, they ask, hey, should I, I don't know if I can do this, like I'm in a, in a job or, or should I make the jump full time or whatever. So it is, I mean, I can tell you that like I, I maybe I'm different because, you know, I, I've, you make yourself uncomfortable. You're going to have to 
at first. Um, and I like, for instance, for me, I was doing this. I moved up from Pennsylvania. Now I had bartending two nights a week. So I knew that at least there was like money coming in. Like I wasn't going to go homeless or broke. Like money was coming in with, with that, where I could flat, like keep my expenses low. It's yeah. always about keeping your expenses low and, and, and um, being able to pay the rent and the bills. Right. So I get asked this a lot by, by other people about, um, you know, should I quit my job? And I always tend to tell them like, get your license first, get your license and, start dabbling in it just like you did because here's the thing is like you're gonna find out if you kind of want to do it at least and you get excited about it so yes, very true my opinion with that is there's gonna be a good time for you you had your time that was mm -hmm. your straw that broke the camel's back but there's always gonna be a good time for me it was I'm working two nights a week bartending I can pay the rent and the bills I can do real estate every other time and then I can still focus on acting it was a lot, but it was like, then it was like, okay, I can get rid of one of these nights for bartending. And still now I have like a little bit of a cushion, but can't, then keep doing it. And then in my mind, it was just like, okay, I can let go of all this bartending crap hmm. because I know that if I press a little bit harder for the time that I would have been at the bar, I could probably do another deal or like, you know, do thousand dollar work instead of, you know, a hundred dollar work. There's you know, a numbers game like, at that point, right? A time yes. to numbers game. Yeah. Time to numbers game. So there was an easy transition for me, not easy, but like it was scary, but it was just, okay, I'm out of it. Cause commission is fully 100% for real estate. So, exactly. you know, and, and that's, that's how it was for me, but I always tell people to dabble in it. And then you're going to know like this, this one guy I'm, I'm working with right now, he has a full-time job. He has to pay the rent. He has a kid, but he's doing so much like as much as he can while he's at work and then on the weekends and the nights that like he just wants to make it happen and there's going to be a time where i know you know three months down the line he has like one two three sales coming in where it's like three to four months of what his salary would be yeah. and if he makes the jump and he continues to press on and work hard that's going to just keep rolling For and sure. that's the that's the key. And you're right. Like I, I keep myself in a constant state of like uncomfortableness. Yeah. Constant. It's, I, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's natural to me now. Yeah. After it's, all it's, years. What, what I say is it's uncomfortable for me to be comfortable. That's absolutely. I get freaked out. I'm like, yeah, something's wrong. Something's you know? wrong. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm pressing, no matter how good I did last month, it's like, keep pressing along you're just going to keep improving and you're going to make it, you know, every and, time. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. And like, you know, somebody, you know, somebody's like all of a sudden, you know, whether it's the real estate thing, I'm still pressing in the acting thing. You know, I've had some good successes, but like all of a sudden, you know, you're an overnight success, but you had like 10 years of <laughs> exactly. just, you know, of, of pressing on like that and yeah. being uncomfortable, you know, a lot climbing. I, I mean, it's like, it's like Kyle, right? we're actually out of time. Otherwise, I would love to keep talking here. I mean, this is, a, this is an awesome conversation. Uh, I, I really, I do hope people, there's a lot of gold in this um, because I'm saying that because I know from my own experiences, like you're speaking from the truth of a lot of learnings that happen uh, through all this. So I guess to recap where we went, because I, I had no idea we were going to end up going where we went. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you if you are in this, if you're starting, push through, uh, be persistent, be consistent. Um, it does get easier. Mm -hmm. Getting is always the hardest, um, but it, it really does work. So I mean, it, it's it's one of the, yeah. and you know you've said a few times like it, it was scary, right? So if you are feeling those emotions, if you are feeling, I don't know if I should do this, you're actually probably in the right area because it is. It is. It's good to be scared. It's, it's good, good to, to be, be scared. scared. Yeah. yeah, from the minute I moved to New York City, like this area, this New Jersey area, it was scary, you know, from that point on. But it was doing that one, that real scary thing and jumping that you have to make it work.
you know, you're, yep. it's good to stay scared like that. And, and I do think you, you, you outlined though, you, you set up safety nets, you know, you, you had your bartending, right? So we're not saying jump without a parachute. Right, uh, right, right. But we are saying when you think your parachute's ready, it is packed. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be scared to want to jump out of that plane, uh, but you'll be so happy when you do it. And, and you know, we'll, Absolutely. You'll, you'll be on this webcast a year from now and, uh, you know, we'll hear your story. So thank uh, you so much for having me yeah. on. I really had a great time. So. Thank, thank you for sharing. Uh, you know, keep us posted on, on if you do any cool, is there any, any uh, inside scoops we can know about Mark Wahlberg that we can share? It sounds like he's oh, a cool no, guy. I have nothing. I, I got out of that and have been doing my own thing, but um, uh, stay tuned, you know, I, I guess. Um, okay. I do have a, a YouTube channel I started out with, with that I do a lot of these like, you know, motivational thing, like things that recap that we've talked about. So awesome. if you just stay with me, I'll, I'll uh, I, you know, hopefully have some stuff that you can watch soon. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So everyone down below, right, right down below Kyle here, you see his company, his email, his Instagram. Uh, so feel free to reach out to him if you have any questions. Uh, if you want to just learn from him, maybe even join his team, whatever you want to do, feel free to reach out to him. And uh, that's it. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good one. Thanks.